Hey, good morning, Brave Church. Welcome to the online service. We're so happy that you're here and you've decided to join us today from wherever you are in the world. We ask that you would sing along with us, that you would clap your hands, dance, do whatever you want to do, just as long as you have a good time, and praise Jesus. Amen. Come on, we sing, I don't get. I don't get your ways. They're higher than my own I don't understand you You're beyond what I can know But if there's one thing I'll never get The thing I can't wrap my mind around I don't get the way you love I don't get the way you love me just the way I am And I don't get the way you love now The way you loved me then When I was broken by my failures You built a future on my past I don't get the way you love Come on, put your hands together get your plans I don't get your plans they're better than my own I can't comprehend you your thoughts are too big for me to hold but if there's one thing I'll never forget the thing I can wrap my mind around I don't a future on my past I don't get the way you love I don't get your love I don't get your love Whoa, yeah. come on I don't get I don't get your wish they're higher than my own I don't understand you You're beyond what I can know I don't get the way You love me just the way I am Come on I don't get the way You love me just the way I am and I don't get the way you love now The way you loved me then When I was broken by my failures You built a future on my past I don't get the way you love Good morning, Brave Church. Thank you so much for tuning in with us this morning. If this is your first time joining us, we would love for you to fill out our digital connect card, which you can find at bravechurch.tv slash connect card to help us get to know you, um, learn how you found out about Brave Church and how we can get you connected. Um, you're gonna notice today that I have some handy dandy notes. Um, we've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Um, Brave Kids Families. You should have received an email on Friday, just like every Friday, that has all of your materials for the kids' lessons this week. Um, if you did not receive that and you would like to, make sure you let us know in the comments um, so that we can get you connected to Brave Kids and everything that's going on in that ministry. Also, make sure if you haven't done so, like the Brave Kids Facebook page. That'll help you stay up to date um, and we're always posting some fun things there. 
Um, as we continue to stay connected with you on Sundays online in our digital ministry, um, we want to stay connected to you in other ways too. So starting on August 2nd, every other week in August, we're going to have what we're calling the Brave drive Through Experience. This is going to take place from 8.30 to 9.30 on a Sunday morning starting August 2nd um, at Milwaukee Lutheran High School. So what you can expect is you're going to drive through with your car, get some free coffee, some free food, you're going to get a pack of activities for your kids, and we're going to have some other fun surprises. Um, so would you help us prepare for that by RSVPing? You can go to our website, bravechurch.tv slash events, and RSVP there just so we have enough materials prepared um, for that experience. You don't want to miss out, and we want to see you in person from a safe distance, so make sure that you take advantage of that. Um, and lastly, before we head back into worship, um, we want to thank you for giving financially to Brave Church. Um, especially during these trying times, we're so inspired by you. Um, if you would like to give and help push the mission of Brave Church forward and help impact our community, you can do so by one of three ways, which are going to be down in the comment section, so make sure you check that out. Um, but thank you so much for that sacrificial giving. Um, we so much appreciate it, and it's going a long way to impact um, our city. So as we end here, let's head back into worship. silence and cower at his robe 
For if my God is for me, then what have I to fear? And I will not deny him the glory that is his. Will heaven not prevail? And strongholds not be moved? Will spirits not be silenced? And cower at his roar? For if my God is for me, then what have I to fear? And I will not deny him the glory that is his. Oh, heaven will prevail and strongholds will be moved. Spirits will be silenced and cower at his roar. I know my God is for me, so what have I to fear?
This is the gospel, God, you are near. This is the gospel, God, you are near. Sing it again. This is the gospel, God, you are near. Yeah. This is the gospel, God, you are near. One more time. This is the gospel. God, you are near, it's who you are, yeah. This is the gospel, God, you are near. Come on, we sing even now. Even now, even here, there's a love casting out all fear. Come on. prepare your hearts for the message. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us for Brave Church Online. Uh, my name is Jake Worth. I have the privilege of pastoring here at Brave, and uh, I'm just so grateful, especially if this is your first time tuning in, that you would spend your Sunday morning with us. We are uh, jumping back into a series that we started a couple weeks ago called Reset. Reset. Right now in the comment section, why don't you just type that word out right now. Reset. We started a couple weeks ago talking about how when Jesus steps into our lives, man, we better buckle up because he is going to reset some things. And I want to carry on that sermon series today. Um, we're going to go to Galatians 6 verses 7 through 9. These were written by the Apostle Paul. He said this, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. In other words, you might be able to fool yourself, but you will not fool the ways of God. Paul says, A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. Doing good. For at the proper time, somebody say the proper time. Somebody say the right time. The right time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Today I want to share a message entitled, It's Not the App. It's Not the App. A PP, not, uh, we're not talking about uh, half-price apps at, at Applebee's. I don't even know. Do they still do that? Half-price apps at Applebee's? JJ, they don't? What? That's why I'm not going back. I'm not going back to Applebee's. JJ's, uh, he's uh, our videographer for today's message. He just gave some sort of quite sure that was a gang symbol, but we'll just move on. It's not the app. Hey, let's have some fun in the comment section right now. Uh, on the count of three, I want you to type in what you believe are the top three applications on your smartphone. On the count of three, the top three applications on your smartphone. One, two, three, go. And I, as you're doing that, I'm going to grab my phone here real quick. Because uh, I, I don't know what I would say the top three applications are. I need to close this message from Jackie. That is a picture of my beautiful baby boy. Uh, I love you too, babe. Uh, top three apps, I would have to say, if I were to go based on usage, um, uh, ashamedly, I'd have to say Instagram. Uh, number two, um, top three apps, I got to go with my, my hit timer. That's right. I've got a high-intensity interval uh, training timer uh, so I can can do timed workouts and then uh, man truth be told the one that seems to reap the most dividends is my chipotle app y'all if you have not yet downloaded the chipotle app and you are not recording your points 
people, just stop. Turn this off right now. Do yourself a favor. Just download the app. Go get yourself some Chipotle. Start earning some points. And now we could have fun going back and forth uh, on our uh, top three applications. We could have some fun arguing which one is, is better, which one is more uh, uh, beneficial to our lives. What, what wouldn't be as fun um, would, and it'll probably cause a Facebook fight, is if I were to ask you, um, which do you believe is the top operating system available to a smartphone? What, what wouldn't uh, be as much fun and probably start a Facebook fight would be as if I were to ask, I won't ask this, if I were to ask you um, whether you prefer Mac OS uh, or whether you prefer Android. I won't ask that. I won't ask whether you're an iPhone user or a, a Samsung Galaxy user. Okay, I'll ask it. Okay, right now on the count of three, are you an iPhone user or, or are you a Samsung Galaxy Android operating system user? Right now, let's, let's just figure out where our fold is. I want to know what type of sheep I'm trying to shepherd here. Are you, you know, are you, um, are, are, are you covered by the blood and you're an iPhone user <laughs> or are you, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to ask that. I already did. And you probably already typed in and somebody probably already left the church because they just think that Android is the best operating system out there. I'm not going to dive into that because truth be told, um, I've had quite a few passionate conversations with people about that very, very, very uh, topic. Um, because for whatever reason, we get very, very passionate, very, very fired up talking about what we believe is the best operating system. It's a very, very sensitive topic of conversation. And I suppose it is important. I suppose, you know, it, it, it really is an important thing to weigh what operating system do you, do you choose? Because after all, the operating system on our smartphone really is going to dictate um, how, how those applications operate. And it's really going to dictate how we experience our, our smartphones. Now, how many of you all know that that proves to be a pretty great correlation and analogy um, for how we experience life? That the operating system that we choose to use in life is really going to dictate how we experience life here on earth. I'm telling you what, there, there's a pretty great um, picture of this throughout the book of Galatians. Book of Galatians is written by the Apostle Paul and, and um, in the last chapter, chapter 6, where we read verses uh, 7 through 9, um, this, is, this is a letter to the people of Galatia. In the very last chapter, Paul, he shifted gears as he went from providing really a, a, a doctrinal foundation for the new believers of Galatia. And, and in, in chapter 6, he switches more to a, a, a halftime speech, um, if you want to say a, a, an apostle uh, pep talk. Um, as he wrote to um, really a, a, a varying group of believers in Galatia. It's more likely that Paul was writing to the entire area of Galatia rather than a very specific church in Galatia. And, and many of the people that were reading these, th this letter um, were newly converted Gentile Christians. And he was largely writing to them and encouraging them, trying to sustain them because upon giving their lives to Christ, upon embracing the message of Jesus, they were immediately uh, experiencing resistance by way of a group known as the Judaizers. The Judaizers were a group of Jewish Christians whose aim was to get the newly converted Gentiles to adapt to the Jewish way of life. Gentiles being non-Jewish, the, the Judaizers were Jewish Christians who were trying to get these, these Gentile Christians to adapt to their Jewish way of life, which would have included following the Old Testament law, the, the Mosaic law, the rules and the regulations, the, the Jewish customs, the Jewish traditions, the, the Judaizers certainly um, in part celebrated the conversion of these Gentile Christians, but they did so by, by handing the Jewish, um, rather the Gentile Christians, 
their Jewish system of life. The Judaizers applauded the Gentiles' decision to receive Jesus as their Savior, but then they told the, the Gentiles, hey, congratulations, um, now you, you need to be circumcised. Welcome to the family. They, <laughs> they applauded these Gentile Christians, but then they said, okay, now you need to start following our Jewish food laws. Now you need to start attending the Jewish festivals. Let, let me see if I can describe the Judaizers in a way that correlates to the theme of this series. The Judaizers were all about Jesus as an add-on to their old way of life rather than the reset that Jesus came to offer. The, the Judaizers, they were all about the applications that Jesus invited us to experience, but they had not yet embraced Jesus as the new operating system. And when the Judaizers uh, began to project their personal ideology onto the Gentile Christians, whoo, that, that perturbed Paul. That, that lit the apostle Paul up. Galatians is, is considered to be the sternest of Paul's uh, New Testament letters. It's where he uses some of the, the strongest language and, and certainly uh, the most severe tone. One uh, scholar even described um, the book of, of Galatians, the, the letter to Galatia, as being the letter where Paul comes across downright angry. And here's why the Apostle Paul got lit up. Here, here's why Paul got pretty passionate in this letter. He got pretty passionate because Paul knew what I bet you have discovered if you've been following Jesus for any amount of time. Paul vehemently challenged the Christ followers in Galatia because Paul knew that Jesus cannot be experienced as an add-on to our old way of living. Paul knew that, that Jesus did not merely come to, to offer some helpful applications for navigating through life, but rather Paul knew that Jesus is and must be the reset on our entire way of life. Paul knew, Paul knew that Jesus came to be the new OS. He came to be the new operating system by which our entire life should be running on. I, I, don't, I don't know, uh, again, um, what it's like uh, to, to use a Samsung uh, uh, phone. Um, I, I've been a saved and redeemed iPhone user for the last, like, man, got to be close to, to 15 years now. Um, but, but one thing that I have learned as an iPhone user is this, is that when, my, when there is a, a new operating system, available, I have, I have realized that it is pertinent that I, I download it and reset my phone as, as quick as possible. I, I've realized that as soon as there's a new OS, whether it's an update or an entirely new OS, I, I, I've, got, I've got to get my hands on it. I've got to download it. I've got to reset my phone because what I've realized is that if I, I keep trying to um, utilize my applications, if I keep trying to utilize my Bible app and, and then my Bible study app and, and then you know um, my, my Bible podcast app and then my Bible quote uh, meme maker app, um, <laughs> I've realized that if I keep trying to use my Instagram app while using an out-of-date operating system, I've realized that Instagram will not work properly. Instagram will, will get a, a little bit glitchy. In, in, in fact, in most cases, Instagram will just crash and it won't work at all. And, and to be honest with you, the first time I realized this, I didn't really know what was, what was going on. And as a result, I know this will surprise you, um, but I got mad at the Instagram app. I got frustrated with, with the Instagram application because I, I thought certainly this has to be an Instagram problem. But then what I ended up realizing was that, that the problem was not with my Instagram app. My problem was with my out-of-date 
operating system. Here's my big, my big point for today, and I'm going to keep it brief. Some of us are growing frustrated or maybe have grown frustrated with the applications of Jesus, the ways of Jesus, the, the practices of Jesus. But the issue is not with the applications. The issue is with our operating system. That this is, this is when in our marriages we're expecting to experience and, and operate in love, but, but we've got an operating system based on our selfishness. And we think that we've got, we've got marital problems, we think that we've got marriage problems, but the problem is really with our personal operating system. This is when we're expecting to experience and, and operate uh, in a, with a sense of meaning and purpose in our career, but we've got a personal operating system that is motivated by money and power. And we're getting frustrated. And we think the problem is with our day job. We, we think the problem is, is with our position at work. And so, so we switch jobs and we try to get promoted to another position. But the problem is not with our position at work. You guessed it. The problem is with our personal operating system. The, the issue, the issue is not, not the app. The issue is with our personal operating system. And, and Paul said as much numerous times throughout the book of Galatians. Gal uh, in Galatians, Paul said stuff like uh, Galatians 5.1. He said, it's for freedom that you've been set free. And so don't, don't chain yourself up to the old system again. D don't get enslaved to, to the old law again. In other words, Paul was saying, you won't experience the freedom of Christ if you keep on fighting to earn your freedom by way of your good works earning your way by good way of your good works. That's the old system. Rather, the new system of Jesus, it, it's based on grace. Somebody in the comment section type in the word grace. That's a, that's a great word to meditate on right now. Grace. And it's the grace of God that both emancipates us from trying to earn our right standing with Christ because he already took care of that on the cross. It emancipates us from having to earn our right standing with Christ and being emancipated, it now empowers us to live as Christ would. But if you stick to that old system, if you stick to that old operating system based on works, here's what Paul is saying, you won't be able to experience God's freedom. You won't be able to experience God's freedom because God's freedom, get this, has to run on God's grace. In order to experience God's freedom, you've got to have the new operating system that is based on God's Grace, are you picking up what I am throwing down right now, Brave Church? Right now in the comments section, type it out. It's not the app. It's not the app. The app is not the issue. The, the issue is with our operating system. And so what do we need to ask Jesus to do? We need to ask him, God, reset it. Reset it. We need a new operating system. This entire series is revolving around the idea that we need that 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 what we need more than anything is a reset on our operating system. We we need an entire reset. We we need we don't just need a new application but rather we need an OS reset because get this if we are running on a works-based OS we will never experience God's freedom. If we, are, if we are running an OS that is based on our success, we, we will never experience and be able to operate in the sense of identity that Christ want, came to adopt us into. If we are trying to, to run um, an OS that is based on our personal wants and our personal desires, we will never be able to truly love and we certainly will never be able to live the lives that were meant to live. He, here's how Paul put it in verse 8 of our text today. He said that when we operate in our personal OS, 
which he said by saying, when we sow into our flesh, when we live how we want to live for what we want, we do things that yield death. We do things that, 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 that decay, that self-destruct. We do things that end up breaking down. Whereas, if we live according to the Spirit, when we live according to the operating system of Christ, when we sow into the Spirit, when we live in response to the grace of God, when we live how God wants us to live, and we live for what God is passionate about, man, what happens? We do things that yield life. We do things that, that last. We do things that make an eternal impact. The phrase that Paul uses in verse 9 is this. He says that we do good. We do good. Let us not grow weary. Let's not get tired of doing good. When, When we live according to the OS of Christ, we do good work. When we are empowered by the operating system of Christ, when we are, we are empowered by an operating system that is based on God's grace, we do good. I want to pause here for a second as we bring, bring this message to a close and just ask you a very simple question. You doing good? Are you doing good? As you look at your, your life is... Is the output of your life a reflection of having the operating system of Christ? Are you doing good? Is the output of your life a reflection of the operating, having the operating system of Christ, Christ who who didn't consider it to be appropriate to use his authority and his power to position himself? over people, but rather he made himself a servant to everyone. You, you, you doing good like that? Are you doing good? As you look at your life, is, is it a reflection of the two greatest commandments that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 22, where he said, hey, let's just simplify this system. This system is a system where we love God and we love others. We prioritize God, as I said a couple weeks ago, where we're we're living to expand the kingdom of God, the works of God, where we're expanding the kingdom of God and we're doing it by loving others. Are are you doing good like that? Are, Are you operating in the freedom to forgive others in your life? Are you doing good? Are you persevering? in the purpose and the calling that God has for your life. Are you doing good? And and here's the big question. What if in order to do good, God has to reset your operating system? What if in order to to truly live the life that you're meant to live, what if it's going to require an OS update? What if it's going to require you to switch from Android to Mac. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But what if, what if it's going to require an operating system reset? Over the next few minutes, I I just would love for you to take a look at the questions that um, will be here online and and just spend a minute or two per question and, and asking the Holy Spirit to speak to you about the operating system of your life because here's what we know, here's what Paul made clear, that when we are running on an operating system, the operating system of Christ, we do good. We do things that last. We live in a way that matters. When we live according to our own personal operating system, when we live according to our flesh, as Paul said, it decays. It breaks down. It dies. Let's tune in and ask God to speak to us over the next few minutes.
Let's pray real quick as we bring this service to an end. Father, thank you so much for your presence and thank you that um, where your presence is, so is your influence. And that's what we want. That's what we need more than anything. We need your influence. Father, I pray that by way of your Holy Spirit, you, you would speak to us this week that you would point out areas in our lives where um, the system needs to be reset. We want an operating system that's based on grace, that's based on hope, that's based on love. We, we, we're done with an operating system that is motivated by our opinions. Maybe it's motivated and it is um, informed by how we grew up. We certainly don't want an operating system that is congruent to the ways of our world, to the cultural norm, but we want that new system that you, Jesus, came to bring. Right now, if you've been watching um, this service and, and maybe you've been watching and, and if I were to ask you, hey, are you following Jesus? Have you accepted uh, Jesus and the role that he needs to step into, which would be the role of being your savior your leader, your God, if that's you today and you're saying, I, I, I'm not following Jesus, but you want to you wanna take your first step with Jesus today, I'd love to, to pray with you. And this prayer, doesn't, this prayer doesn't save you necessarily, but it is, the, it is the intention of your heart being expressed by this prayer that starts your new life in Christ. If that's you, I would love for you to pray with me. We're just praying, dear God, I give you my life. My old way, it doesn't work. And I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry that I've tried to figure out things on my own. I'm, I'm sorry that I've tried to live my way. I want your way. I want your operating system. Thank you for dying for me on a cross. Thank you for creating a way to experience and follow you. Thank you for dying for my sins and reinstating me based on your work, not my works. Thank you for your grace. I give you my life. I surrender it to you. I'm moving forward with you, God, in your name. Amen. If you made that decision just now, I just want to celebrate you. And I don't want to celebrate you... <laughs> like the Judaizers by saying, okay, now here's what you need to do, but I want to celebrate you because you are now taking your first few steps with Jesus. But I do want to warn you, as you take your first few steps with Jesus, like those Gentile Christians in Galatia, I want you to expect some resistance. And the resistance will come in, in a lot of different ways, shapes, or, or forms. I know one, one thing that's common is when we first give our lives to Jesus, we, we expect, maybe we expect everything to change. We expect all those feelings, those wrong feelings that we had, all those desires that, that we've wrestled with, we expect them to just disappear. I want to let you know, I hope that happens for you. It probably won't happen. But here's what will happen. You're going to find that, that God is going to start empowering you to move forward in areas where you've been stalled. You're going to find that God's grace is going to empower you to make some progress in areas where, where you have totally been kaput. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. That that's, not, that's not the expectation that we should place on our lives. But rather, God's grace is going to meet you where you're at. And he's going to empower you to move forward in the life that you're meant to live. If you made that decision, I'd love for you to Facebook message us. Or if you uh, head to our website and just fill out the, the online connect card, head to bravechurch.tv slash connect card. Fill that out. We'd love to, to get in touch with you and, and help you move forward in the life that you're meant to live. As we wrap up this service, I, I want to again remind you of the exciting opportunity that's starting on August 2nd with our uh, drive through Brave experience. I'm telling you, you're not going to miss it. You don't want to miss it. You're, you might miss it, but you don't want to miss it. Um, we're not just going to be out in front of Milwaukee Lutheran saying hi, 
thanks for stopping by, but we're going to have some free food for you. We're going to have some things for your kids. It's going to be fun. It's going to be brave filled. And so as a part of Brave Church, we hope that you will be there starting August 2nd at 830. We'll be there from 830 till 930 a.m. so that you can get home and get all settled up in your comfy clothes on your couch for the 10 a.m. service. We hope to see you August 2nd for our first drive through Brave experience. Have a great week. We'll see you next week online.